Hey, it's Mark Podolsky of the Land Geek, your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Art of Passive Income podcast, I am so excited, dare I say delighted, to have back our newest coach, Larry Merle. Larry, welcome back. Hey, thanks, Mark. Excited to be here. I'm, I'm so excited. If you guys haven't heard Larry's journey, uh, we interviewed him. Uh, a couple months back, but Larry, for those that didn't hear that podcast, can you kind of just fill us in on your background and uh, how you found Land Geek? Yeah, well, um, well, my background is my uh, my calling and career is I'm a full time pastor, and I'm an executive pastor up here in the uh, Seattle area, east of Seattle, uh, at East Ridge Church, and. Uh, um, so yeah, I've been in been in ministry uh, for uh, forty years now, and uh, it's something that I enjoyed doing. So I wasn't really looking for something to uh, to replace that and get out, but I was looking for ways to uh, get uh, extra streams of passive income uh, for my later years in life. And um, so I had done. Um, I had some various rental properties that I was uh, uh, long-term rentals in uh, two or three different markets around the country that I was pretty passive in. Um, they were kind of turnkey situations, but I recognized that was probably a little slower, longer play. And I, I was getting itchy to find something else. And while I was uh, taking a walk, listening to a podcast, I heard about uh, Mark Podolsky and the Land Geek. So I jumped on and Man, dove right in. I bought the toolkit first in July of 21, and uh, by the end of August 21, I was in flight school and rocking and rolling. So, yeah, that's kind of my background, how I found you, and I'm super excited that I did. It's just been life-changing. It's been awesome. Yeah, yeah. And then you did a year of coaching, uh, and, and who who was your coach? It was I was Eric, right? Yeah, Eric Peterson. He was awesome. Yeah, yeah, he was yeah. just needed. <laughs> and so, and so now your, uh, your passive income. Tell tell us a little bit about how it's changed your life, having that that passive income uh, each month. Yeah, um, you know, I'm not uh, I'm not uh, really taking a salary out because I have you know a salary from my. Uh, ministry position. So I'm kind of just pouring it all back into the business and expanding and scaling. Um, but it, uh, it does, uh, it does uh, just kind of open your eyes to the reality of passive income. You know, you hear about it and uh, but when you start to experience it, realize, you know, I did that. I see this amount coming in every month and I did the work a couple of, a couple of years ago now, and, and it just keeps coming in and, and keeps building. And uh, so, you know, just the whole, uh, I guess, firsthand experience of that coming in uh, starts to open up your mind to uh, all kinds of things you can do. Uh, because I really just see money as a, as a tool to do what God's called us to do on this earth. So, uh, yeah, I get really excited about it. It's, it's kind of fun, actually. I love <laughs> it. I love it. Okay, the last three months, what's been your favorite yeah. deal? Last three months. Wow. Okay. Hadn't thought about it in the last three months. Um, yeah. Uh, my favorite deal has been repeat deals with uh, buyers that I, uh, you know, they've just been on my buyers list and continue to buy. And uh, there was a gentleman who uh, he's bought like five properties from me now. And uh, he'd never gone out and seen any of them. And yeah. uh, just a couple of weeks ago, I went out and man was just sending me pictures left and right. This is a beautiful piece of property. I love it. You know, so just, you know, uh, not not in the sense of uh, it, it was one of those just bread and butter deals. And, you know, nothing. Uh, I mean, it's when, when we say nothing exciting. Yeah. What? Twenty five, thirty cents on the dollar is exciting. Right. Right. Uh, right. But <laughs> you get kind of used to that. And uh, it's the norm, but uh, he uh, he was super excited, and just the you know it just meant a lot to me that that he really loved what he had gotten from our company, and and that I had an opportunity to provide that for him. It was pretty cool. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. So you know when you got done with 
your coaching program and seeing your your results and and how much you were able to just grow your business and scale your business. I I said to you, Larry, like I think you'd be an amazing land geek coach. And now here we are. Uh, you're going through land geek uh, coaching training, and I'm just curious. You know why why do you want to coach? Yeah, you know I've been asked that a lot. <laughs> it's like, don't you have enough in your life? Why, you got yeah, why you got you... a lot going on. <laughs> but you know, uh, it it really is true that um, I'm spending less and less time uh, in the business and uh, and starting to just see the the machine run and it's exciting. Uh, but uh, why I, I want to do it, um, you know, it's just it's it was so helpful for me. To, to just have somebody who was further along down the road that, uh, you know, could just uh, encourage me, but also prod me to take the steps that I needed to take. And, um, you know, I thought, wow, first of all, I was honored you you even asked. I thought, wow, I'm only a, a couple of years into this. But, um, you know, I, I feel like maybe I can just relate to those who are just getting started out because it wasn't that long ago I was there. And uh, hopefully encourage, inspire them. And I just love helping change people's lives. And this is just another tool to do it. So, yeah, no, I I love it. I I knew that would be your your answer. It's um, <laughs> you know, because that's that's just it's like it's just like another calling. But yeah. what's interesting for me is that you know I've been doing this twenty three years, and you know some of the other coaches have been eight nine years, seven years. Like we're so far ahead. And when we're talking to our, our clients, you know, it's almost becoming like we're unrelatable at that point where you just a few years ahead, you've, you're, you've been where you've been in their shoes just 24 months ago and can have a little bit more, I would say empathy for Mm -hmm. their struggles than, than maybe I know I can for sure. It's hard to kind of go back and, and, and and feel those feelings of what it was like to be a total newbie in the land business. Yeah. And so, yeah. uh, and, and then just you as a person, uh, it's hard to leave the room with you and not just, <laughs> you know, just be not, not even just inspired, but just there's, there's something, there's like this ineffable Larry quality where <laughs> you just be, you're, you're just like elevated. So um, I, I think, even that alone is going to be a huge benefit to uh, not just our coaching clients, but the entire Lanky community. And I couldn't be more grateful personally. So, <laughs> so thank you. Well, I'm delighted to be a part of the community. It's, it's an amazing group of people. I learn every day from uh, somebody on the, on the team, somebody in the community. And it's, it's, uh, it's fun to be a part of. Yeah. Yeah. So if I was going to ask you, let's say that, uh, Tate's specialty is sales. Taria's specialty, it might be marketing. Uh, Eric's specialty might be systems and processes and and technology. Uh, what would you say your your specialty would be? Um, and I, uh, I, 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 by the way, I have my own opinion on this. You have your own opinion. <laughs> yeah. Well, my strength is people. And so I would say either yeah. sales, probably just the interaction um, with people. Um, but um, yeah, because I'm not I'm not super strong. That's why Eric was really good for me, helping setting up those systems and stuff. It was not something that I was super passionate about, but I'm so thankful for it now. <laughs> uh, yeah. But, um, but yeah, um, I think probably the sales. Um, and uh, the thing about sales is, um, uh, you know, I don't, nobody wants to come across like the, the, you know, the sleazy guy that's trying to sell you something that's no good. Um, I just love hearing about people's stories and how uh, we can solve their problems. Uh, yeah. And, and that, that's, what, that's what changes it for me in sales. It's not like I'm trying to twist their arm to buy something that I just want to get out of my inventory, but uh, I need to hear about them, hear what their struggles are, what they're trying to, what they're trying to solve. And, and uh, you know, most of the time there's something in my inventory that will help them with that because they obviously reached out. And so it, 
it just gets to that point where it's really kind of fun and cool to uh, to know you're helping somebody, not just trying to twist their arm and buy something. No, absolutely. That that's what I was going to say was was going to be the the people part of it, the sales part of it. Do you do you like the managing aspect of it with your virtual assistants? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I do. Um, you know, it, it is a, it is a challenge. It was a little intimidating actually for me. It's, it surprised me that it was intimidating to post a job and, and have somebody come on board. But, um, as you slowly begin to get to know them, uh, you know, invest in them, try to build a good culture and a community within your business that uh, has good core values. And, um, you know, not everybody sticks, but that's okay. Um, there's more people out there and, um, and so, uh, yeah, I, I do like that. I do enjoy it. I'm, I'm enjoying it more and more as, as the team starts to take shape. Yeah. Yeah. What's your, your favorite way to communicate with your team? Um, we do, uh, Slack mostly. Um, okay. and, um, you know, I'll, um, I'll occasionally do some, some like, uh, zoom calls or something like that, but probably Slack is just the quickest, easiest way yeah no i i we use slack as well it's uh it's great so getting back to the the sales part i know a lot of people struggle with sales and you know we talk about this in the training but we're not in the convincing business it's we're not trying to you know really convince anyone to buy anything but what do you what do you think it is when you, you talk to other land geeks and, and people like what, what is the hangup with sales? Well, um, you know, for me initially, I was just so um, starving to get a sale or two, you know, for the proof of concept. And I think right. back to, uh, man, man, why did that person buy from me? <laughs> because <laughs> I had to sound desperate, but when you, when you realize that the deal flow is coming in, and, and um, you know, marketing is just a matter of getting it out there as many places as you can. And, you know, uh, it's a numbers game and eventually somebody will be drawn to it. <clears throat> um, you don't get as desperate and you realize if this person doesn't buy, uh, it probably wasn't right for them or the, or the right time for them. So, um, you know, the next person will be there uh, and you just got to get to that place where you can trust it. So. But I think a lot of people, um, yeah, it's it's that um, uh, not wanting to come across as, um, you know, that salesy kind of person. But, um, you know, as I have conversation, as I just mentioned earlier, I just think thinking about it differently, even though we teach them to do it, but to, to try to put yourself in their shoes and say, OK, I reached out, reached out for some reason here. What is that reason? And if you get them talking enough, you'll be able to hear and you'll be able to know what it is that's driving them. And uh, then you can say, wow, that, you know, this, this really will fit for you. Um, How can we make this work? And, uh, you know, one of the things that helps me and I've I've taught my team is, uh, is there anything more that you need to know before you start moving forward with this? You know, just kind of leading them into it because they're, you know, some people just keep asking questions just to talk and keep asking questions. So you have to come to that place where you just say, anything more you need to know before we move ahead with this? Because it sounds like it's a it's a right fit for you. And right. uh, those kinds of lines, you know, uh, just to help people move forward. I think they're just sometimes a little afraid to make that step, but just try to reassure them. So I don't know if I answered your question, but uh, that was big for me. Just making that mind shift um, was helpful. No, I, I definitely think you, you answered the question. I, I think a lot of people struggle with that where they they say to themselves oh i'm not a, a sales person I, I don't want to come off as salesy where you are re you know sort of reframing that and say no i'm not i'm not a salesperson i'm i'm guiding them i'm 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 there to help them solve a problem if i can't solve their problem i won't solve their problem but if i can i'm going to do it in an elegant way where they're going to make the decision themselves. I'm going to help them make the best decision for them. I'm not forcing a piece of land down their throat and it's about me. It's, it's always about them. And I think that's, and I I really think that's just a part about getting your reps in. I think it's awkward Mm -hmm. at first. And 
by the fifth or sixth or tenth call, you get more comfortable with it. You know the types of leading questions you're going to ask. You get a sort of a a spidey sense if this is even the right yeah. property for the person, or if this is even a person you want to have a relationship with, and and have a right. a, a note with, because yeah. if they're saying to you, "Oh yeah, I, I need to move out there tomorrow," they're like, "Oh no, not <laughs> not, not great." A- Right. Yeah. So, but it just takes time. And um, I think it just, just like anything, it takes time to build that confidence as well. Yeah. And I flip it around for me. I mean, obviously I'm a little bit more natural conversing with people, uh, but you know, on the, <clears throat> on the automation side of things on some of the uh, technical side of things uh, I felt really awkward and I, and I didn't know really how, but uh, the more reps of just doing it and trying it and failing, get some help and, uh, I did it enough to know what I needed. And then I was looking for, okay, how can I get somebody on my team or somebody else who they actually get joy out of this? <laughs> and, uh, you know, so I think if somebody's struggling with sales and it doesn't, they don't get any joy out of it, you at least need to do enough reps to get to know it. And then you can hand it off to somebody who does and it fires them up to go after those sales. So, um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then if you're listening to this and you're thinking about going to coaching, if you're a process systems real techie person and you love the analysis and the analytics and the deal flow side, which a lot of people do, but you you really are sort of uh you know weaker on the marketing and sales side, Larry as a coach would be a perfect fit for you. You wouldn't want to work with an Eric Peterson because where he's <laughs> strong, you're already strong. And so we actually try to match people up like that with our coaching team where um, it, it works. Now, it's always a coaching team because we're going to help you with systems and processes anyways. But to have someone that's you know, really strong in an area where you're weak, I think is, is really where we can shine and, and you know, yeah. help you accelerate way faster. Well, Larry, this is uh, it's always it's always great talking to you. But now we're at that point in the podcast where traditionally I'm going to ask you for your tip of the week, a website, <laughs> a resource, a book, something else actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? Well, you know, uh, before when I was on, I, I recommended a book, and I know that's a uh, it's a common go to, and it's easy to go to. I'm not super into all the apps. So I was thinking about this, knowing you were going to ask me, and uh, I'm actually going to give um, just the concept and a reminder to a lot of people, and that is take a Sabbath. Uh, You know, uh, early on, I was just trying to do, you know, every little bit here and there, and I was every day was, you know, in the business working hard. And it's that whole idea of sharpening the saw that if you don't uh, just take time and, you know, Take time for yourself to rest, to renew, to refresh. Uh, before long, uh, you're not going to be as sharp as you used to be. And uh, so, you know, um, I I had to kind of listen to my own preaching. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, and take a Sabbath. And, you know, at, at, at first you kind of feel like, oh, man, I'm going to get behind. Uh, you know, I've got these goals. But I just found that it just helps to uh, clear the mind, get me right, then go into the next week. Uh, with uh, renewed passion and vigor. So um, I would say my tip of the week is make sure you take a Sabbath. <laughs> I, I love that tip of the week. And I think it's so important when, and, you know, but I, I see it more with our W2 people where mm-hmm. they feel like if they're not in it and they're not working, 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 they're not being productive. And there's this whole other economy when you're an owner. Because you don't get paid for your time anymore. You get paid for results. Right. And so taking right. that time and that Sabbath to think and think deeply right. about ways you can leverage and grow your business is so much more valuable than you know just quickly getting a task done that could be done by a, a $5 virtual assistant. And so right. it's it's a hard mindset to to shift. I think that's... It's so good. And we, we, you know, we try to preach it as well. Where, oh, you're you a good know, preacher, Mark. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> you know, you, you know, we get on and, you know, you want to work on the business, not in the business, the whole Michael Gerber, 
e-myth uh, philosophy, but I, it, it's hard. It's hard. I mean, I think it's it's a struggle because you see all the things and you want to do. And uh, it, it's, yeah, that, yeah. that is a well, great thing. It gives you a chance also just to reconnect with the people around you that you're doing it for, you know? Um, yeah. Can't, yeah. You can't yeah, lose exactly. Sight. You can't, you can't lose sight of that. Why? And, and so often, you know, people do lose their way, right. Um, mm-hmm. In, in various ways. And I think that's, it's so, it's so great uh, to do. If, if you were going to say, okay, um, here's, here's a, a book or, uh, a video or something to to help you sort of re recalibrate your values and really sort of look deeply at what's your why why you're doing it what's most important to your life would you, would does something come to mind um a, a book um a book or a video or a movie or or something you know something like that where it's yeah. like oh here's here's a here's a great thing to just kind of just quickly reset besides listening yeah. to this podcast <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> uh i know i've had uh had some go-tos in ministry for me um you know there's a book by wayne cordero called leading on empty leading on empty leading on empty and, uh, you know, it is related to ministry and pastoring, but the whole idea of you're always giving out, always giving out, always giving out, but you're not filling your own tank. Yeah. Um, you're, you're going to crash and burn at some point. And so, um, you know, just off the cuff and you saying that in, in, in my world, uh, that's been a, that's been a good book, uh, to go back to over the years, uh, and just remind myself, I need to take some time to fill the tank. I love it. I love it. Well, my tip of the week is just to listen to this podcast again. And <laughs> and just even just if it's the last five minutes of, of Larry giving his tip. No, should I give a tip, Larry? I, I don't even I didn't even prepare one. But you know what I'll do? I'll send them to your website to check out your your site. What's your website? Uh Mustangland.com. My tip of the week is check out Larry, Mustangland.com. And if you're fortunate enough and privileged enough to work with Larry. I guarantee you it is going to be a transformative experience for you. I, I know it, it's that relationship has been for me in my life. And uh, yeah, Larry, you're just, you're just a gem of a human being. So thank you so much <laughs> for, for joining the team, giving back to the community and, uh, and, and helping our, our newbie land geeks literally not just solve their money problems, but solve their money, their time problems, and also know why they're doing it as well. So thank you. Yeah. Well, thanks for the opportunity. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, I want to thank the listeners, remind them that the only way I'm going to cajole Larry to come back on the podcast and drop more nuggets of wisdom is if you do three little favors, follow, rate, review the podcast, send us a screenshot of that review, support at thelandgeek.com. I'm going to send you a signed copy of Dirt Rich which right now is going on eBay for at least $15. No, I'm kidding. Just just do it selfishly. It helps it helps us get really good guests. Anyways. All right. Are we ready to do this, Larry? Ready. One, two, three. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. Ring. That was that was so awkward, but it's all good. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring.